and he kicked his own my teeth because there is an interpretation for why I am weeping. And if it's because of the enemy, he's storing that up so that he can pour it out on him one day. Amen. And then there are tears of joy. Praise the Lord. He said, those that sow in tears shall weep in joy. Praise the Lord. That your weeping may endure for a night. They always thought that that was, praise the Lord, a weeping because of something disruptive in your life. But sometimes you're weeping because you can't just stop weeping. Hallelujah. You want to go to sleep, but you just can't stop weeping because of the joy of the Lord. But God said he'll give you some sleep. He said you may weep through the night, but when you wake up in the morning, you will have joy. You may start weeping again, but weeping is good. Don't ever stop crying, saints. And our young people of destiny, come on, give the Lord a hand, please. For them in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. We thank Dr. Mother Robinson in our absence and the wonderful report concerning Lisa Robinson. We thank God for that. Amen. In Jesus' name, we want to keep, amen, Brother Glenn Fields in prayer. Praise the Lord. He had death in his family. Amen. And we want to pray that God would heal and comfort the family. In their hour of bereavement. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Praise the Lord for all of our auxiliaries, our musicians. Amen. And thank God for Sister Gales. Praise the Lord. She's back from her cruise. Amen. And we thank God that she is with us. Amen. We're excited. Amen. To hear her. Praise the Lord. I didn't know five days could make a difference. Amen. She tested me. Found out if I was still in love. Amen. And I said, I'm glad to hear your voice. She said, it's only been five days. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I went to listening to the voicemails because I couldn't contact on the ship. Yeah. Amen. That works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when you can't hear from God, you sometimes you got to put on a CD. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I, I started rerunning the voicemails. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to help yourself. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, one more day. That the Lord has kept me. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to have it back in Jesus' name. And we thank God that He is keeping you. Praise the Lord. I want you to journey with me. Amen. In a passage of scripture which is found in the 8th chapter of the Gospel of John. Praise the Lord. The 8th chapter of John. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to see what the Lord wants to say to us yes. this morning. Praise the Lord. Truly the Lord is good. Yes, and he has yes. blessed us exceedingly, abundantly, of all that we can ask for you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. We just bless God. He's an awesome God. Amen. Have you ever been blessed where you just can't stop thanking Him? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to look at John 8.32 and then we're going to turn briefly to the 17th chapter of John and the 17th verse. We're going to read these together. Amen. So when you have it, just say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. John 8.32, let's read. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Alright, let's turn over to John 17. see what God would have us to hear this morning and the 17th verse let's read it sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth bless the reading of God's word it may be sanctified in our hearts that we may grow thereby I like to use as a thought on this morning are you free are you free? Let me ask, well, I didn't hear anything. 
talking about freedom or bondage in the scripture. Well, you would have to read that whole chapter. Praise the Lord. And you will get the gist of, amen, the message this morning. Are you free? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for you said that uh, whom the Lord has made free, they're free indeed. And Lord, we are free from the life of bondage. We're free from the life of sin. We're free from the life of degradation and hopelessness. Father, we thank you for bringing us into the light. We thank you for sanctifying our minds, our hearts, and our will and way. Father, we ask, oh God, that you would cause a spirit of freedom to come upon your people. That whatever they may feel bound by, God, that before this message is complete, God, that they would be free indeed. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for thy word is truth. In Jesus' name, let's say it together in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord another hand. Are you free? Praise the Lord. Well, you may say within yourself, well, I'm not incarcerated. Uh, I can make my own choices. Um, but are you really free? When you're in the kingdom, freedom is living a life within the kingdom walls within the principles and the standards, the precepts, the statutes, commandments, and the laws of God. That's true freedom. Freedom is not being bound. The Lord Jesus Christ came and freed us from the penalty of the law. However, those that are free desire to obey the law. The difference is, is that in obeying the law, it's not connected to you being justified in the sight of God. You are justified by grace and mercy. Well, you may say, uh, Pastor, well, if we're not justified by the law, then we should be able to do whatever we want to do. Well, you have to understand that God is a God of law. That's right. He is the law. That's right. He said, lo, I come in the value of the book. It is written of me. He said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to what? Fulfill the law. He is the Lord. He is the word. The word is the law. And the fact that we are in God... We are in Christ, in Christ in us. Praise the Lord. Our desire is to obey the law. The difference in being justified by the law and being justified by grace and mercy is the law condemns you and sends you to hell. All right. If you're going to live by the law. But grace and mercy sustains you and qualifies you and validates you to be a kingdom redeemed child of God. There are many in the church today that are still bound. They're coming to church. They're shouting and praising God. But they're not free. They're not free because they don't rely on the word of God. Amen. When a trial or wind or situation comes their way, praise the Lord, they're shaken like a reed blowing in the wind. They never grasp onto the lifeline of the word of God and speak the word to that situation, but they allow their circumstance to put them in a spider web. Praise the Lord. Tie them up. Tie up their minds, their hope, their aspirations. Everything that people have spoken over their lives, that situation has bound them and cast it aside. And now they're living in hopelessness. But I come to tell you this morning that there is a word from the Lord. And the word this morning is 
you can be free. You can be free. And it's just simple. It's simple. All you have to do is surrender everything. You have to trust God for him to operate in your life completely. That everything you do, you would say to the Lord, trust him and say, Lord, if it be thy will, praise the Lord. The reason why we take responsibilities upon ourselves and we try to fix our own bound situation is because we know all of the details of how we got involved. Praise the Lord. Sometimes God was involved and sometimes God was excluded. And we find ourselves wrapped up, tangled up and bound. But there was a need for deliverance. There is a need for the word of God to break those chains and fetters. Praise the Lord that we sometimes put on ourselves things that people have spoken over your life. Amen. That's why when you come in the kingdom, you have to be validated by the word of God. Amen. That's why you've got to get familiar with the word of God because the word of God will tell you who you are in God's sight. Not what people have said about you. Not what they write on Facebook. Amen. And blog about you and Twitter about you. Amen. Not what the family members have said about you. Not because mother and father forsook you at an early age and brothers and sisters do not keep in contact with you. But it is the word of God that speaks volumes of words to who you are to God. See what matters is who I am to God. It doesn't matter what you feel. When I was young and didn't have any knowledge of who I was trying to find my identity. Amen. I thank God for my training that I received as a little boy being born in church. Amen. Learning the principles and the ways of God. Giving me confidence that there is someone that I can call on besides another human being that can help me in my situation. That's why the Bible is true, saints of God. There is nothing, even every jot and tittle of the Bible is valuable. Praise the Lord. There is nothing insignificant. Matter of fact, the Lord talks about the members of the body. He says the least of them become the greatest. Amen. So don't despise small beginnings. Praise the Lord. The few that you may have, God can take the little that you have, which appears that you don't have no faith that you can have more. And if you just rely on the word of God and speak abundance in your life and tell God what he told you. Praise the Lord. He said, my word shall not return unto me void. If it has gone out of my mouth, it shall prosper in the thing to where I send it. I've learned to trust in the word of God and not my circumstance. I've learned to realize that I am delivered. Amen. From the mind of Satan. That uh, I am a child of God. The apple of God's eye. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. Amen. I know that I have been called out of a world of darkness. And I know that I am abiding in the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. There is no praise the Lord. Uh, 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 trouble with my image anymore. Praise the Lord. I was the shyest man on earth. I should have contacted the Guinness Book of Records and maybe, praise the Lord, I would have had an occupation way before I was eligible to work. But God had to validate me. Praise our God. And he had to show me that it was the confidence that I would find in his word. Everything in the Bible is true. Thy word is true. That's why he tells the young people serve the creator in thy youth. Why? Because there is something about the word of God that heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away. There is something about the word of God that if we can learn to appreciate and value what the word of God actually means. The word of God created everything that we see. The universe, the heavens. Amen. Praise our God. The word of God is what establishes us in the earth. Which gives us confidence that what we ask for, praise the Lord, according to the will and the word of God, it shall be done unto us. The problem is, is that we have not read the word where it says you've got to wait for a while. Amen. But while you're waiting, you got to pray with supplication and thanksgiving and let your request be known unto God. And God said, while you're waiting, praise the Lord, he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. I'm willing to wait. Is anybody willing to wait just for a little while? Listen, I don't mind waiting, praise the Lord, to get a car as long as I got transportation to get to and for. I don't mind waiting to get a job as long as people are bringing a little food by the house or I got a pantry to go to. I don't mind waiting, praise the Lord, in a 
relationship as long as I know that God is going to deliver the right man, the right woman. I don't mind waiting, amen, to get the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. If the Lord can keep the devil at bay while I tarry in his presence, I don't mind waiting. Waiting is a gift of God as part of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the word wait is located in Matthew, in Galatians 5.22. It's called long-suffering. Praise the Lord. God is not going to pity pat us. Praise the Lord and make us weak back safe, but he's going to give us something that we can endure. He uses words like long-suffering or compound word. Amen. Why did he have to put the long in there? Suffering is bad enough. Uh, but he wants you to know that the long-suffering of God is patient. Uh, it establishes a desire to wait on the Lord. Praise our God. You ain't going to suffer long. Praise the Lord. God just used those terms so that we can put it in our own uh, meaning. Praise the Lord. All we hear is long and suffering. But that long suffering, you're being kept by the word of God. Uh, but the problem is, is that we don't seek deliverance. Deliverance means to be released from bondage or imprisonment. Deliverance is setting free those of us who are bound, even Christians. If you are in a bondage state, you need deliverance. If you struggle with compulsive sinning against God's will, things like pornography, praise the Lord, we gotta bring this thing to a current state, amen. Fornication, drugs, alcohol, addiction, rebellion, gluttony, hatred, strife, lying, stealing, gossip, Mental torment, unhealthy obsessions, uncontrollable anger. Amen. You need deliverance. Amen. And we have direct access to God. The Bible says that when Jesus gave up the ghost, praise the Lord, the veil in the temple of God was rent in twain. That means that the, the veil was torn. Amen. To give us access to the Holy of Holies. Amen. I would have jumped right in there. Praise the Lord. When only the high priest. Amen. Jesus went in there for us first. Hey, but he said, listen, I'm not going to forbid you from coming in. I'm going to give you access to our thank God. Huh? You see how good God is. The high priest in the Old Testament said, you better stay out there or you die or you come in here. Jesus said, they don't know what I'm going to do in the New Testament. I'm going to let my people come in and sup with me. I'm going to tear down those walls and partitions that keep me separated from God. I'm going to get rid of the priests in the Catholic Church that's making intercession for the saints. There's only one mediator. Show, huh? whatever it is, you need deliverance from it. Huh? Get deliverance. 
praise and you can watch it now and then. Uh, you can turn it off when God said it's time to pray. Uh, amen. That's the problem. That's why we're bound and locked down. Uh, and we can't get a breakthrough. And we, amen, go weary and well doing because God ain't answering us. Well, you ain't in position for God to answer you. Amen. You got to position yourself. You got to create an atmosphere for the Lord to bless. He ain't just blessing anything. Amen. That's why the Lord is in the situation that it's in. Because it wants to live its own ways, wants to make its own laws. Huh? We're the only institution where they want to throw out the rule book. I don't understand it. Huh? The only institution that can get you to go in, we want to throw out the rule book. Huh? Rules, rules, rules. Huh? That's right. There's rules in the church. Huh? And when you break the rules, praise the Lord, God is going to deal with you. Huh? Because he's the rule maker. Huh? He's the law giver. And uh, when you violate the law, praise the Lord, God shows you grace and mercy. Huh? But if you repeatedly break the law, then God has got to get you to see the limit. Against me, 
shall prosper. Go ahead, form your weapon. He devise your ways in secret. He made God serve a God that sits high and he sees what you do in secret and he's going to expose it openly. I got a hedge around me. Praise the Lord, I'm fortified. I am the God. I'm God's high. I'm the one that he died for. You got to say that. insignificant no uh -uh. God brought you in this world because he ordained you yeah. from the foundation from, I said from the foundation of the world the word the word the word hallelujah we don't want to get into the word that, that's the flesh because when we get in trouble and God has somebody talk to you that don't know you and ask you, do you ever get into the word of God? And you'd be embarrassing. You want to say, yeah, I read my Bible all the time. You know you don't read your Bible all the time. Praise the Lord. That's why you in trouble. That's why you have to look for a word. Huh? Huh? So that's, that's why we always, I hope somebody speak a word to me today. Ain't nothing wrong with encouraging each other, but encourage yourself. Yes. David yes. said he encouraged yes. himself in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You don't keep waiting for folks to encourage you. You're going to get manipulated. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's not encourage you so much, I don't drive, but can I borrow your Lexus? <laughs> Because I prophesied that you would get that. So, you think about it, you pray about it. I'll call you in the morning. They ain't waiting for you to give them an answer. They want you to feel guilty because they spoke a word in your life. But see, God knew their heart. You see, God will use anybody. See, that's why you got to be friendly with everybody. Here's what I have to care about this. I said, I don't have no enemies. I don't have human enemies. <laughs> Only enemy I have is the devil. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And do you know something? When you're in the spirit, God can use the devil. How do you know God can use the devil? Yeah. Oh, I know you think he is so lost. God is using the devil right now. Praise the Lord. He's using him right now. Hallelujah. He is the other tree. Praise the Lord. And you have to make up your mind which tree you're going to touch. The tree of life tree of knowledge of good and evil. Praise the Lord. And it's the word of God that helps you make your decision. And when you make your own decision, because he has thrown something out there. See, a lot of times God just gives you something. It's broken down to no frills. That's why it says in Isaiah 53, to look upon them, there is nothing to desire. Praise the Lord. That's why the saints of God Look, used to look peculiar, you know, and people didn't want to look like them because they look too strange. But they were helping themselves. You got to help yourself. Hallelujah. If I got to wear sackcloth and ashes to keep me humble, I'm aware and I ain't worried about what you think. I'm going to humble myself. I ain't gonna come in here and, and the word go forth. Do you have anything to repent of? Come on up here and repent. Of. Oh, if I go up there, I know God gonna reveal it to somebody. Well, you stay back there and let it consume you. Praise the Lord. Because the only way you get delivered is you deliver what's keeping you back to the altar. When you confess it, that's when the devil is gone. That's right. See, he, he don't want you to confess it. It's your confession that justifies you. And it's that your confession that condemns you. So you've got to confess that evil that's in you. Why well, hold on to it and say, I ain't going to say nothing. I don't want people to know. Listen, the more you let it be exposed, the more the devil is exposed. But when you try to keep it in secret, he's going to bring some other with him. And then you're going to be bound and then he going to tell you, well, you might as well back out of that altogether because it's not going to work. They know about 
church. And then the devil's got his group whispering. Right in the kingdom. Yeah. She messed up. And you hear them. God is going to give you, amen, a keen hearing ability. Where you can hear them all the way across the room. And when you look over there, they both look at you at the same time. Making you feel guilty. And then the devil start talking about you. See, they know. They know. You want to, you want to, you want to leave. No, you need to get it delivered. Get free. Get free. We're born in sin. And shaping in iniquity. He wants to bind us. And God gave him the advantage. He said, here, I'm going to show you how much power I got. I'm going to deliver them in the world into your hands. And God said, I'm going to show my power. And that's a powerful God. That he would allow us to be born into the kingdom of darkness. Huh? We're born into the kingdom of darkness. And God said, listen, I'm going to show you, devil, that I can go and snatch them out of your hand. Woo! Hallelujah. All he tells the parents to do is bring them to church. Train them in the way that they should go. Because the knowledge of God, it's going to be planted. It's going to be planted. There is some food that will stick to your ribs and really nourish you. And then there's other stuff that will jack your body up. The good stuff helps your body grow. Be healthy. The word of God, when it goes into your ear and you take just a moment to meditate on it, he seals it against the walls of your soul. So even though you ain't thinking about God, it's still there. And guess what? God's word is good seed. So guess what? It's germinating and it's growing in your soul while you're still going in the wrong direction. But then all of a sudden, God going to create an external situation. And you're going to say, Lord Jesus. And then all that stuff in your soul going to come alive. And start at Lord Jesus. When the devil going to back you up more, you're going to say, oh Jesus, help me Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, you're going to realize that the enemy is going to back up. And you're going to say, wow. Wow. They killed those three people over there, but I got away. But it was because I said, Lord Jesus, maybe God is sending a sign that I should turn my life around. Wow, I know I should have died. And then all of a sudden, all that stuff that was planted in your soul is now bearing fruit. Hallelujah. God didn't just put that in there with the hope that they would come around, that they would learn about who the Lord is. No, he put it there. So that when they get older, that thing is going to be birthed. Yeah. It's a seed. There ain't no dead seeds in God. Hallelujah. His word shall not return void. When you speak that word, even if you expect it, you lay your hands and you speak the word. Hallelujah. Well, your carnal mind is thinking, well, how does the baby don't hear me? Baby's all in water. Baby can't hear me. God does the miraculous. Did you think how that baby developed in you? Huh? You ain't doing nothing but walking around, holding your back. And God is doing everything else. And then all he tells you to do is push. You ain't got to recreate any opening or anything. He just say push. Very simple. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's a miracle. Hallelujah. I said, which is the head? Because the placenta came out too. I'm wondering what, what in the world is that? Huh? And then all that come out to be what we see. That's amazing. That is a you are a miracle. You are a miracle. 